Hi guys and welcome once again to Martin Itch and Sons YouTube video channel. Now I'm at home today playing um, uh, with the Latte Panda. Da -da. Right, okay. Um, reason why we got these in. Um, we got these in because of things like, say, the, the Wires X um, from uh, Yesu. Um, it was... Um, it was becoming quite obvious that the, the software only runs on Windows and it was becoming more and more obvious that people had to run a computer for, you know, 24-7 if they were running a repeater or something. So we were really looking for a solution that was low power um, because some of these uh, repeater sites don't have power at all and they're running off batteries or whatever. Um, and it was just, uh, we, we searched, you know, high and low for one of these things. We've come across this Latte Panda, which is actually a 4 gig um, RAM, um, 64 gigabyte EMMC um, Windows 10 board. It has a 1.8 gigahertz uh, quad core uh, processor. I believe it's ARM. I'm not sure. I can't remember off the top of my head that one. But um, the... But it does. It basically is installed Windows 10. Now we've we've done this. It comes pre-installed with Windows 10, but we bought these without the operating system activated. Okay, and we've done that for a very good reason. If you want to continue using the the Windows 10 operating system, you're going to have to to go to Microsoft and purchase a license. It's not a huge amount of money, um, but we did it like that because. Some people don't want to use Windows. It may not go into a, um, a YSX uh, repeater environment. It may go into something completely different. So we wanted to be as flexible as possible. And this just ticks all the boxes. Now, it only takes one of you guys really to be, um, to, to, uh, to be of a, a, um, a good engineer that could get this into um, something like the SMB201 uh, box which sits at the bottom of the FTM100 and FTM400 um, when it's um, you're being used as a, a you know sort of just keeping it out of the way nice and tidy it's got a cooling fan and all sorts of things in it um, but it wouldn't take much to get one of these inside there and and this fits just perfectly it is unreal um, so it'd be very interesting and see if uh, one of you guys uh, actually did actually pick up that that challenge and, and and do it because that would be very very good. Now, I've been we supply these with a with an acrylic case. I'll be honest, it's not the the best acrylic case I've ever come across, um, but it is the only one they supply. Okay, there is a wooden one available, um, but to be honest, um, we went for the acrylic. But it does keep the the unit safe and out of trouble. It is a devil to put together. It really is a devil to put together. And we will put that together for you if you ask. Um, but unfortunately, there would be sort of uh, probably 15 minutes um, labour time to, to pay for. Um, but we will do it. It's it's not going to be a huge, um, you know, it won't be a deal breaker. Let's put it that way. Um, so we have these in stock. Um, by all means, go and grab one. They're, they're really, really good. They're, but they're also a really... Um, fantastic uh, computer as well um, I mean I ran a flex 6700 on this and had eight slices going um, it's not going to be the best performer in the world in fact quite the opposite but the fact that it did it um, was really quite incredible um, I'll tell you a little bit about the, the, the little unit it's um, it's actually got you got two USB 2 ports one USB 3 you've got an HDMI port around the side here you've actually got touch control um, uh, connector um, which is a ribbon cable type connector and you've got a color display ribbon um, uh, ribbon uh, cable display adapter so you can run the um, like seven inch touch screen um, displays providing they have those two separate ribbon cables um, and it's also built into this is an Arduino um, it's got a coprocessor of an Arduino so what does that mean well there are some cases where you might want to um, say um, you, you might you might have a, a, a node station or something that you might want to to relocate its antenna direction um, throughout the you know throughout the day. So for instance, you might be pointing to you at work, and then in the evening you might want it to turn around and point to you at home. I don't know whatever it might be. Um, but this is um, the Arduino is capable of controlling stepper motors, um, rotators. Um, all sorts of things. It's it's a um, it's a very versatile um, sort of pre-programmed um, board, and to have the two combined is quite in, it's quite impressive. 
Um, but anyway, so anyway, moving on. It's also got, you've got a USB uh, power connector. Um, I think there's also an option to power it from inside the board. And I, I probably am tempted to go down that route, maybe with something like a buck converter or something like that. I, I'm, I'm looking into that. Um, because obviously you're going to be limited to the amount of current you can supply via a, um, a micro uh, SD, or sorry, a micro um, USB port. Um, on, the jury's out on that one at the moment. We're running them with the Raspberry Pi um, power supply. So if you need a power supply, do ask us. Um, they're not hugely expensive at all. Um, and we have those in stock all the time. But it's also got a micro SD slot. Um, in there as well which is you can put pretty much any size card you like in there and it's also got audio um, an audio jack and also um, I think it's gigabit as well um, ethernet um, this one has they don't sorry they have a reset button and a power button on the side um, and you have all of the normal um, ports for the Arduino here the the GPIO ports um, fantastic stuff um, and also you've got some, um, I would call them GPIO ports, but this is direct access to the, um, the main processor. Um, how you would use those, I don't actually know at this stage, but you know, again, the, the, we're, we're, we're working on it. Um, Steve's actually taken one of these home as well, and uh, he's really into his, uh, his uh, programming and uh, bits and pieces. So we'll, we'll, between us, we'll, we'll come up with some ideas and uh, I'm sure we'll get these things uh, rock and rolling. But what this means is for, for, you know, moving forward is um, this suddenly has opened up the world to the fusion side. So all of the, you know, people that were, were wanting to, to have their own nodes at home running the HRI 200 now can easily connect to this. It's, it's not a, a big problem. You can run a whole node now off of a very basic um, sort of setup. You can... You know, you don't need um, a fancy computer system or anything like that. You just need a very basic monitor or one of these really cheap seven-inch um, touchscreens, um, and away you go. It's it's all it's all up and running. You've basically got the uh, you're connected into the YSX system, and uh, and all the fun that that will bring. So there you go. There's the Latte Panda. I'll give you a. Um, it's a. a an inexpensive Windows 10 1.8 gigahertz PC with four gigabytes of RAM, 65 gigabyte hard drive or eMMC um, built on board um, for, well, it's it's amazing. Um, really, very good. Um, I should say actually, um, in the kit you get, you get a case, you get the fan with the heat sink on, um, and obviously you get the mother main board itself and that does come pre-installed with Windows 10 but it is not activated okay it's very important um, I'm not sure if I actually said earlier in the video but we did do that for a, for a reason um, because obviously some of you guys are very um, computer savvy and are running say Linux or other operating systems and whether it be Kali whatever whatever it might be um, so we wanted to be fair to everyone and kind of, you know, put it across the board. So there it is, the Latte Panda. See you later.